Welcome to Bryan College Online, our very last video for this class. We are looking together today at um, parables of the kingdom. So let's dive in. What we're going to look at today is what is the kingdom of God? So as we look at parables, we're going to ask the question, uh, what exactly is this thing that so many of the parables are talking about, the kingdom of God? How is that like a treasure? And then, uh, what are some of the other parables of the kingdom? So, let's dive in. Jesus said this in Matthew thirteen forty four: The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. And then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. This is uh, one of uh, Jesus' very famous uh, parables. What does it mean? Well, as I look at this parable, some things that jump out at me is one, that it's like a treasure. Um, uh, Jesus is telling a story. Imagine, you know, you're... Um, maybe cleaning out a, a house that uh, you've inherited uh, and you come across a file cabinet and you open it up and it's full of stock certificates and, and you begin to look up uh, what they're worth and realize that this is a vast fortune. Jesus said that's what the kingdom of God is like. Um, uh, something just beyond your wildest uh, dreams in terms of, of what this is worth the kingdom of god is like that and people who find and realize that that's what the kingdom they're filled with joy they can't believe it they would give anything to be a part of that kingdom when we look at the kingdom of god as an idea um, graham goldsworthy has really helped the church uh, He's pointed out that the kingdom of God is the center of biblical theology. And you can think of the kingdom of God as God's people in God's place under God's rule. And ultimately, that coalesces in the person of Jesus. And then all those who will ever be incorporated into Jesus by faith. And so this kingdom is a massive thing. It's a glorious thing. Um, it's it's worth it's worth is beyond measure and it's talking about the person of Jesus and then those that he transformed by his grace some of the passages in the Bible that talk about uh, the kingdom and uh, being with God in heaven this is one Psalm 1611 you make known to me the path of life of course uh, Peter is applying this to Jesus in Acts 2 um, in his resurrection. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Not just joy, there's fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Um, some people, you know, describe heaven as... Uh, sitting around on a cloud with a, a harp uh, and um, some people have said that sounds pretty boring well um, I don't know where people really get that picture from that's not how uh, being in the presence of God is described in, in the Bible this is talking about pleasures uh, forevermore eternal pleasures uh, when uh, Peter quotes this. He um, helps us understand it. You make me full of gladness. Not just you make me glad. You make me full of gladness with your presence. Another passage, uh, 36, 8, so, Psalm 36, 8. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights and what's interesting about that in the original it's the river rivers of your Edens uh, plural um, uh, so it's like the this garden of pleasure and this is talking about multiple pleasures uh, um, being a part of the kingdom of God 
uh, John puts it this way, Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. Jesus is untemptable by evil. Jesus is completely wise. Jesus is powerful. This is talking about his people becoming like him, uh, seeing Jesus. Uh, some people uh, call this the beatific vision, uh, the vision of the blessed becoming blessed. Um, <clears throat> of course, how do you how do you get this? How do you get that kingdom? How do you become part of the kingdom? Well, uh, Jesus starts off his sermon on the mount. Blessed are the spiritually destitute. Uh, part of uh, experience the glories of this kingdom is recognizing that we don't have it within ourselves uh, to do these things. Uh, parable that talks about the growth of the kingdom is uh, interesting. Um, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make its nest in its branches. Uh, Jesus is pointing out that in Palestine, um, the uh, smallest seed there is a mustard seed, a tiny little seed. Uh, but it grows into a huge plant. And um, Jesus is saying that's what the kingdom of God is. It starts out very small. It looks small, but it ends up being this huge thing. Now, one of the things that we don't really uh, recognize, but that's true of this passage, is this is a quotation from the Old Testament. And when you ask, well, where is it a quotation from it's very interesting because it uh, is picking up a statement in Daniel 2 and Daniel 4 about world kingdoms and so Daniel 2 um, talks about this world kingdom the first one is Nebuchadnezzar uh, the fourth one looks like it has something to do with Rome and then it talks about this event that happens uh, this stone cut without human hands that strikes and the result is it crushes and and uh, causes all four of these world empires to go away but it uh, grows to fill the whole earth and of course that's uh, picking up uh, the statement of the original intent in Genesis 1 fill the earth and subdue it and instead having disobeyed God uh, we have the earth is filled with violence, uh, but we have this statement of filling, uh, filling the earth. And back at 2.14, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters fill the sea. So this idea of filling the whole earth with this kingdom of God, very popular idea. Uh, in those days at that time, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. The other ones, uh, uh, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, those will be destroyed. This one will never be destroyed and it will stand forever. So what is this fifth kingdom? Well, it seems like Jesus is saying the fifth kingdom is this kingdom of God. Starts small, starts insignificant, fills the whole earth um, the beast and so this is where he's quoting the beast of the field found shade under it and the birds of the heaven lived in its branches Jesus is saying that's what the kingdom of heaven is like so it looks like this is promising some kind of world empire some kind of world influence for uh, Christianity as we close, we might look at how this plays out. There are a lot of different uh, ways people have kind of uh, put the uh, the 490 years. Uh, 
this seems to be one that is persuading some people. It's the one that persuaded me uh, that somehow this has something to do with the death of Jesus. I, I would probably put this in 30 uh, and put this at 33, but uh, God building a new temple, a temple out of people from all the nations of the world, and that that temple will grow and multiply and fill the whole earth. Listen, I hope you have a good time talking about these things. Uh, thank you very much for taking this class, and I look forward um, to talking with you soon. Thanks.